Hello, I'm Aaron Lieberman. I'm your MC for this particular track. I'm a cloud practice manager at Big Compass, and today I'm pleased to announce Yan Sun, technology standard manager at IATA, and they'll be talking on airline industry API standardization. Very much looking forward to this. Thank you, Aaron. So hi, everyone. My pleasure to uh, talk here in API Days. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, today, my topic would be how IATA OpenAir program will be supporting and serving airline industry API standardization. Before we start the presentation, we don't have a lot long uh, session today. It's just 25 minutes. I will be uh, try to finish the presentation and leave some uh, a few minutes for Q&A sessions, but feel free to raise all your questions in the chat box. So I will be either answer all the questions online or offline after the uh, presentation. So uh, just a quick uh, overview on uh, what is IATA, what do we do? So uh, IATA is the International Air Transport Association. We are the trade association for the world airlines. So representing 292 airlines global wide, we, ha uh, we have the presence of uh, in 53 countries worldwide. And there are three core roles from IATA to support the industry. First of all, we advocate for the industry benefits worldwide. At present, uh, one focus of the advocacy is the uh, industry recovery from COVID pandemic. And the second role would be uh, standard setting activities uh, under the industry governance. IATA coordinate with uh, member airlines and our strategic partners to develop uh, global standards. The aim is to assist airlines by simplifying processes, offering better passenger experience, reducing cost, and improving efficiencies by bringing the consistency in operations and technology standard, etc. The uh, as you can imagine, the technology standards is a critical enabler to achieve the objectives by promoting automation, standard data exchange, interoperability, consistency in the interface design, etc. So uh, yeah, this is really uh, what uh, I do as part of my team. So a uh, third core roles would be the uh, aviation data and services. We, um, from IATA, one of the core services we offer to the industry would be the IATA financial settlement systems. So on um, uh, 2019, the figure is that we processed uh, more than 400 billion US dollar per year to support the fluent flow of uh, money across the uh, different industry parties. And uh, in addition to that, we do have other publications and data products services to support most of aspects of the industry. Okay, so just to take a quick look on overall uh, how APIs has been developed across the industry to the topic of, uh, of today. So from IATA side, we uh, run an industry API survey uh, back in 2017. So there was quite some uh, interesting result we see from this uh, survey result. First of all, uh, most of the uh, uh, participants in the survey thinks APIs make the travel experience safe and efficient. And uh, surprisingly, and uh, uh, we, we see there are APIs developed for, for, from all different uh, industry providers in each and every step of the whole passenger journey. Be it like as a passenger, you want to search and try to shop your flight ticket, or once you have, uh, when you book your uh, order, confirm your, your uh, flight, or if you want to check the flight status for your departure or arrival time, et cetera, or you want to do the checking, uh, passport control, print your boarding pass, present your boarding, boarding pass for, uh, for boarding, uh, 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 et cetera. There are all APIs from uh, those, uh, those steps and also in flight entertainment, connecting gate for, for your transfer flight and your, the baggage checking if you want to see exactly where a baggage is located uh, as, uh, at present. So uh, those APIs can be, uh, from, from the uh, participants, those APIs can be open APIs or the partner APIs. And interestingly, one member airline said to us before, they have more than 1,000 APIs developed or in development within their organization. So you can see how APIs are emerging uh, across the industry. 
And also from this re result, we clearly see there are more and more APIs uh, 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 to be developed by different parties like airlines or airports, because 70% of the airlines and airports, they plan to provide open APIs, open up the digital capabilities and expose the APIs and data through this kind of channel. So with the growth of the APIs across the industry, what are the key challenges or uh, issues to be resolved uh, 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 across the industry where our member airlines are expecting IATA to support? So uh, from the same survey, we are asking this kind of questions. And interestingly, on the diagram from left-hand side, you will be able to see the number of the voters for each and every different uh, challenges they faced. In, uh, we, we raised in the, in, in the survey. So basically from uh, bar one and two, we clearly see that the uh, 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 interoperability would be a, a key issue to be addressed in terms of uh, the data format and the data definition. So as a consumer, I want to understand the uh, data I've retrieved from the API provider, and I expect the common data format and also common data model definitions, including the uh, fields and ent uh, entities, and also the uh, meaning of the different uh, 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 information from the data. So clearly, we see the uh, consumers expect the interoperability from the provider side so that they can interpret the data they, they get from the API provider. And also, say, uh, we see the interoperability, as you can see from the bar four, the uh, provider and also the consumer, they expect some consistency on the connection methods, meaning that I know exactly how I could uh, interact with the API with some consistency so that I can uh, save my time for the integration, etc. So, uh, so all these results are representing the uh, interoperability issue. And the second, uh, second challenge would be the discoverability. So this is where uh, some of the voters are saying we expect a common industry API directory. So to help the discoverability of my API, because we don't see there's a single API registry, some common place where it includes all the industry APIs um, uh, uh, available as of now. So the uh, uh, members expect the some common industry API directory to support the discoverability. And also thirdly, as you can see, there's uh, some challenges on the implementation guide. So the members expect some design or implementation consistency here. And also I brought one uh, uh, a diagram from a Smart Bear State of APIs 2020 report. As you can see clearly, the uh, top challenges for the developers to scale the API development is the standardization. Again, bring some consistencies in API design uh, implementation is a key challenge to be addressed. So with all of that, you can see the standardization is the key uh, problem to be addressed. IATA created the open air program. The vision of the program is to facilitate the development of industry uh, APIs and also by creating the uh, industry open API ecosystem through the industry standards, services, again, as I mentioned, the core role of IATA. And uh, uh, the vision is also to use the open technology under the industry governance within this open air program. And uh, talking about industry governance, there are two industry governance bodies overseeing the uh, open air activities. The first one would be the Digital Transformation Advisory Council, or we call it DTEC. The DTEC is really the a body to set the strategy and uh, priority from a digital transformation uh, side of the uh, industry to IATA. So DTEC uh, clearly set the uh, uh, up to uh, the up the um, open air activities uh, by building standard open APIs, and they endorse open air as part of the industry restart plan in June 2020. And another governance body is uh, uh, what we call the Architecture and Technology Strategy Board. The board is to take the strategy and uh, to plan the implementation of the. Uh, a strategy as of open API activities. 
So ATSD said clearly the, um, the, the direction that we requires the open API, in other words, uh, REST API with the data exchanged in JSON format as the technology of choice for standard development moving forward under different IATA working groups as industry standard. So there are three different streams in uh, uh, open air program or three pillars if you want. The pillar one, we have an open air working group uh, developing actively the industry standards as uh, REST API. A uh, second pillar would be we promote the adoption of open APIs uh, uh, following the open air best practice. And here in IATA, we have a certification program. Uh, anyone, any API provider from the industry, they could apply for this certification free of charge. They can show, they can prove that the, uh, their APIs follows open air best practices. Then if all uh, verification is done, the APIs can be published in the industry uh, API registry to be discovered and uh, by the uh, industry uh, developers. So the third pillar would be the API ecosystem. So um, if you are a developer, you have the APIs available. Maybe then a good choice for you would be to have your APIs or your data to be discovered or to be consumed by as many parties or many uh, developers as possible. So in this case, the industry expects IATA to help building the uh, API ecosystem services uh, by offering the advanced direct API directory services to promote the discover discoverability. And also another service within the API ecosystem would be the identity management service. It's basically to build the trust between the API provider and the API consumer so that the API uh, consumers uh, ensure the APIs they're interacting are from verified industry parties, basically the authenticity of the uh, API provider in this case. So I'll give a quick uh, introduction about the three pillars uh, in, in, in sequence. So first of all, for the standards, as I mentioned, we have an open air working group. There are more than 30 airlines and strategic partners as part of the uh, working group. We have a frequent calls um, uh, uh, with a focus working group uh, to build actively the uh, uh, REST API standards, keep improving the standards. Uh, and uh, the second uh, idea would be we promote uh, the design first idea. We want to standardize the API design by having, uh, by verifying the API uh, specification document. In this case, we if we have good design, we ensure the quality of the uh, following steps of uh, uh, API lifecycle management. And we try to reuse the industry best practices. In this case, we, we leverage a uh, open API specification for the time being, the, uh, the current version is um, adopted by OpenAir is uh, 3.0. So, uh, but while in the working group, we plan to transi tra transition to 3.1 in the later stage, since we saw the uh, standard has been published uh, a few months before. And um, in terms of uh, reusing, uh, also we want to promote the reuse of a standard uh, industry data model because in IATA, we have a model called the airline industry data model, or in other words, AIDM, uh, maintained by the IATA team and also under industry governance. And since we have al already a standard data model, including the business capability segregation, business process models, uh, uh, data model, logical data models, including the entities, properties, associations, associations between entities, uh, 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 cardinalities, etc. We want to represent the standard data model in JSON schema format. Then those uh, schema objects could be readily reused by the uh, uh, API uh, developers in their API specifications. So in that case, there are basically two benefits of to have this um, common data definition. First of all, if you are an airline or you are an API provider, you can have consistent messaging uh, uh, within within your um, uh, 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 within your own organization. Uh, in that case, if you have multiple APIs, the data definition across different APIs would be consistent. Or if you are integrating with the other industry parties, you uh, want to make sure you understand the 
data uh, elements or uh, schemas defined in the other APIs, then it brings some consistency in the uh, data exchange models, messages, et cetera. And in addition to that, the OpenAir standard also covers the other aspects of REST API design, such as the resource naming, versioning, error structure, response uh, uh, objects, uh, et cetera. I have put some um, uh, references in the last slides. So if you are interested, feel free to check the, uh, click the link and open the uh, OpenAir uh, standards and best practice uh, document to, to check. So you have the idea about in general, uh, what about the standards? But uh, here, let's, cons uh, let's take uh, another uh, angle. If you are an uh, API provider, you already have some APIs what the uh, how the standardization is related to your APIs. So just to give a brief introduction about what we standardize uh, uh, in terms of APIs, there are two different use cases. First is the industry standard API. In this case, uh, the uh, standard API specification is developed under the industry governance by the collaboration between different uh, business working groups and also the technology working groups. Then all the parties involved in this process, we, they want to design a common industry standard API specification to address uh, one uh, scenario use case or use case from the industry, from, for example, flight status or common use uh, APIs, uh, et cetera. So this is a really uh, a standard API is published by IATA following the normal release process. While another use case, which it might be more close to your um, uh, 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 situation, would be if you have uh, your own proprietary APIs, you want to uh, follow the uh, uh, industry API best practice, and uh, you want to uh, 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 expose your APIs to as many uh, de developers as possible, then in that case, you could um, apply for a certification on your own proprietary APIs. You just prove you are following the best practices, reuse the standard data models, etc. You can apply for uh, uh, open air certification for your APIs. As I said before, after the certification, you will, your APIs will be published into the industry uh, registry. And now you may have the question that how it actually works to standardize my proprietary APIs. Then it's just to give a quick introduction about the procedure. So first of all, you have all your freedom to select your own API design tools to uh, uh, how you want to uh, uh, manage your API life cycles, how you want to manage your uh, dev environment or software configuration management tools. Uh, uh, all of that is at your choice. So what basically what you need to uh, send to uh, IATA team for certification would be when you finish your API design, you just uh, send the API specification to IATA team, apply uh, for the certification, filling a, a certification form, et cetera. And then when we receive your uh, API specification, again, it's OAS 3.0 uh, spec, we will be verifying, we'll be loading this uh, spec into the open air design governance tool. So for now, IATA is partnering with uh, SmartBear using Swagger Hub as a, a design and a governance tool because, because we see it's a good fit for the uh, API design uh, purpose. Then we will be loading this OS into Swagger Hub and we want to verify, first of all, it's a valid OS uh, uh, specification. And second, you, uh, you are reusing the standard uh, data model from uh, AIDM. So how do you ensure that you, you are following the standard uh, data model? In this case, uh, from AIDM, we plan to generate a standard uh, uh, open air JSON library. So I will be discussing a bit in details for the library. And this library, you can load it into your own development tool. And also the library can be loaded into the open air design tool as well, so that we can make sure the uh, uh, API specification is following the uh, standard uh, data model and reusing those standard schemas in from the library. And also we have the, uh, we plan to develop the compliance checking rules. Basically those rules is nothing different than a set of machine readable and automated um, testable uh, style checking rules. 
on the API specifications. So the, the, the purpose of this, this set of rules is really to convert those uh, text and the descriptions from a standard document into a, a set of automated rules to enable the uh, self-service uh, uh, API ver verification possibility and also to improve the efficiency for the whole verification purpose. Uh, purpose. And then, as you can imagine, OpenAir team will be working with your, you as a developer to uh, collaborate and to improve the API design if uh, anything needs to be done. Or we basically finish the verification process uh, uh, from this, uh, uh, following this uh, procedure. And then, again, just to give a little bit more details about how this uh, uh, JSON library works as a standard data model to be reused. You can see some examples of the JSON library on the right-hand side. Uh, as you can see, this uh, JSON library contains uh, nothing different than a set of OS schema objects. Again, the, those objects have been uh, generated and represented uh, uh, from uh, AIDM in JSON format. In that case, those, those OS schema objects are readily to be reused in uh, any REST API design following the Open API Specification uh, 3 uh, standard. Then how the developers should consume the library in order to get the certification? Uh, the, the most simple thing is would be you reuse the whole standard scheme object itself or you found that there are too many properties under one uh, scheme object. I, you don't need all of that. You just want to keep the um, uh, your API schema uh, models uh, fit for the purpose. You can remove the unnecessary properties from the uh, standard schema objects. Instead of uh, 100 data elements from the schema objects, you just need 10. You can select uh, uh, and handpick uh, those 10 uh, fields from the JSON schema library. Then you could uh, uh, reuse the subset of the elements. Or uh, the third option would be you want to add more restrictions on schema objects. You want to enhance the standard models by introducing some more rest rest restrictions instead of uh, allowing more flexibility. For example, uh, for a string or a uh, field, you want to add some regular expressions to have more strong validation about the content of that field. Or if you want to find uh, uh, apply the limitation about the number of the records returned as a uh, uh, from from one API call, things like that, you you can uh, add those uh, restrictions on the uh, on top of the standard the scheme object, or you, you you see I may want additional uh, schema definitions uh, sub schema properties on top of the standard uh, data model. You have the fl flexibility to do that. Basically, what you want to do is to extend the uh, schema object by adding some content on what we call the experimental content. You just mark it as experimental, uh, specifying this is a different than the, uh, this is some extension on top of the standard uh, model. Then you can, uh, your API still follow the standards. And also this is a good way uh, to uh, introduce potential extensions into the standard uh, data model. If we review those uh, uh, experimental content, we think it, it makes sense to extend the standard data model by merging those experimental content in, into it. Then this is a good uh, source of uh, uh, request to uh, expand the standard data model as well. So quickly regarding the delivery plan for JSON library, the, for now the JSON library is available for evaluation. We have done uh, several rounds of evaluation with the extended uh, industry group. And the next step with the pilot library and the implementation guide, which is show, uh, showing to uh, developers how you could uh, consume the library will be published in the ne next few weeks. So stay with us uh, on the IATA OpenAir website for the updates. And the full library delivery would be end of uh, 2021 this year. And just quickly regarding the certification or uh, adoption uh, stream. So we can see here is the current adoption status for open air standards. For now we have 12 airlines, one strategic partners, 
And when startup companies have already got the certification and published their APIs in the industry registry, and we really set the certification in different levels uh, uh, in, in order to accommodate the actual situation of the uh, API development for, from different parties. And the basic, uh, we, we have basic certification and full certification showing that you are following all the standards. So again, the certification is free of charge. Uh, by doing that, you expose your APIs to the potential industry consumers also showing your uh, uh, willingness and the capability of following industry API best practices, and also possibility to gain new business partners, partners from this uh, 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 process. Just to check a bit of time, yeah. And the last stream for the ecosystem part. So as I said, this uh, ecosystem is really to address the discoverability and the trust um, uh, uh, challenges. So here is the uh, conceptual model for uh, open air ecosystem. Again, we are trying to, uh, uh, we started these activities a couple of years before, and this has been put on hold due to the pandemic, uh, COVID. Now this year, we, try, we plan to restart and continue the uh, ecosystem activities. So first of all, just to consider the potential end users from the uh, ecosystem, we have different uh, API providers and API consumers across the industry. And also IATA team has been involved to support the ecosystem services. And um, first of all, we want to build the trust between the provider and consumer by introducing the identity management industry standard and also the uh, uh, services and products in the uh, API ecosystem. So we want to make sure, uh, most importantly, all the providers before we uh, publish their APIs into the registry, we verified they are the uh, authentic industry parties provide the uh, uh, data or uh, API as digital capability. And as part of the core services of uh, uh, API ecosystem, we want to build the advanced API directory so that the verified provider can publish the API information into the registry. So the API could be the uh, open air certified and standard API or the API providers can publish their non-standard API with um, all different types of uh, technologies like uh, we store API or with the data exchange in uh, uh, XML or the GraphQL APIs just to help uh, uh, promotion of the API uh, development across the industry and also the discoverability um, challenge so that the consumers can connect to the directory in order to dis discover uh, the, their interested APIs from different uh, uh, categories of, uh, of the industry business lines or, or, uh, or, uh, or different kinds of, uh, uh, by all different kinds of search criteria. And also we want to promote the connectivity from between the uh, consumer and the provider. So from IATA, most of our uh, member airlines, they may have already the dev portal. They uh, keep the connectivity with the developers through their own dev portal. But for some other airline members or other strategic partners or industry parties, they don't have um, necessarily the dev portal, but they may uh, want to connect their APIs, exposing the data maybe from testing environment or real environment through the API advanced directory so that they can immediately uh, uh, automate the uh, uh, exposure of their APIs to the consumers. They don't not necessarily needing the manual intervention or contractual procedure. Then the, the API consumers could um, test their API, uh, APIs um, and uh, see if they are interested or not. So, uh, Hey, Yan, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we are out of time, and we have to move okay. to the next presentation. This was a, okay. a great, great presentation. And what I'm going to have to say is, uh, you know, again, we're going to have to move to the next one. We don't have any time okay. for questions, unfortunately. But you know, for, mm -hmm. for our guests and our viewers, reach out okay. to Yan directly. Reach out to Yan in the chat to ask any questions for him. I personally have some questions, Yan, so I'm, I'm looking forward to following up with okay. you. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem.